Hi, section 7, Supervisors. In this section, we're going to explore a very important OTP behavior, the supervisor. We'll see how we can arrange processes as trees, how to implement the supervisor behavior, and how to configure it with different supervision strategies for various needs. And with that, let's move on to the first video, the supervisor behavior. In this video, we'll introduce supervisors by recapping the concept of application and linked processes. We'll then formally introduce the supervisor pattern, implement it for one of our previous examples, and observe the supervision tree. We've seen on the previous section that an application can be considered a group of processes that work in tandem to achieve some business logic. And we've also seen on the section about processes that they can be linked together when performing tightly coupled tasks so that if one process fails for some reason, the remaining linked processes can be notified of the failure and either trap it or fail themselves. So let's consider two processes linked together. Let's say the process on the left is some kind of server, which receives messages from a calling party and forwards them to the process on the right, a worker. Obviously, the worker can fail processing the message, but we don't want the server process to crash along with it. More so, we may want the server process to restart the worker in said event. How can this be done in Elixir? Fortunately for us, there is a behavior from OTP that deals exactly with these cases, the supervisor. A supervisor is a process whose only function is to supervise the life cycle of a group of child processes. It can restart the child processes in the event of a failure using a specific supervision strategy, which governs the actions to take when a child fails. The child processes can also be supervisors, which creates this tree-like structure we call the supervision tree. This is a very powerful tool in Elixir, as it allows us to model our applications as process trees, which may fail arbitrarily and are restarted when needed. It fully embodies the let it crash mantra. To see supervisors in action, let's put our car deck process that we've created on the last video being supervised by a deck supervisor. This way, when the deck runs out of cards, the supervisor just spawns a new deck. First thing we'll need to do is create a new module to hold our supervisor. This will live inside the decksupervisor.ex file and have the same name, deck.supervisor. Like with GenServer and application, we need to call useSupervisor in order to start implementing the behavior. Now we'll start by implementing the init function of supervisor spec. This will be responsible for starting the deck gen server as a worker. We're going to be using the one for one supervision strategy and starting the supervisor with a static list of children, one deck gen server. This means that whenever our deck is depleted, the supervisor will spawn a new one. Now let's implement the start link function so we can spawn the supervisor from the application without referencing the supervisor module. We're also spawning it as a name process, since we'll only have one deck supervisor at all times. Finally, let's replace the spawning of deck to deck.supervisor on our application. This way, it's the supervisor that will be spawned, and in turn, it will spawn the deck gen server. We can now test and see if we can still access the deck on IEX. And indeed we do! So now let's take a look at the supervisor's children using supervisor.whichchildren on our deck.supervisor. And we can see there's an instance of a deck in there. Let's check it using observer.start. And we can see that our application now has a different process tree, with the supervisor having a link to the deck process. So to try our supervisor out, let's try and deplete the car deck and see if it's still working accordingly. and it crashed, as expected. But if we do deck.takeCard again, it should be working normally, as the supervisor restarted the deck gen server.